Are you ready for the word this morning? <clears throat> All right, so as I already mentioned, I'm going to be talking about fasting. So dig in. Are you hungry already just thinking about fasting? Yeah, I apologize. But it's, it's a new year. Happy 2020, everybody. And it seems like every time there's a new year, there's just this fresh optimism in the air. Anybody ever feel that? It's like as soon as the calendar turns over, just because we said it's a new year, it's like, well, now things are going to be better. Right? And there's just this, all of a sudden, there's optimism just because it's now a new year. It's, it's not 2019, it's 2020, so we changed those numbers, and now everything, there's just hope. And uh, people have this determination that this is going to be the year. But we all said that last year, too. So was last year the year, or is it going to be this year? I don't know. Maybe it's every year, but we say that almost every year, don't we? This, this, no, okay, no. That was just a, that was a test. That was just a practice. This is for real. This is the year that things change. How many people said that this year? Don't lie to me. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah. This is going to be the year that I lose weight. This is going to be the year that uh, I get my finances in order. This is going to be the year that I stop wasting so much time and just kind of be better with my time. And the funny thing is, we make things so complicated, and I think we make it complicated just as a way so we can actually avoid making the changes that we want to make. We make things more complicated in our head than they actually are. The reality is this. All we have to do is decide to change and then do it. Like, it's so simple. I, I want to lose weight. Okay, here it is. I'm going to break it down for you. Eat less, exercise more. But we're like, oh, but then I got to get a gym membership. I never buy a gym membership. How do I get a gym membership? And I really like chocolate chip cookies, so that's going to be a problem. And we just reason it. We make all these stupid things, right? We just make it so complicated. It's not complicated. It's like, oh, well, I'm going to get my finances in order. Well, I don't, I, how am I going to do I got all these bills to pay? Well, you just spend less than you make. It's pretty simple. Like, it's, it's not complicated. Spend less money than you bring in. Your finances are in order. But we're like, oh, but I got to do this and that, and how am I going to pay for this, whatever, make it complicated. Oh, how am I going to make better use of my time because I got to do this, I got to do that? It's simple. You just delete Facebook and Netflix. Problem solved. <laughs> Stop making things so complicated. Am I right or am I right? Yeah, but we just love to make it so complicated so we can make all these excuses for why we don't have to change. If you want to change something, just decide you want to do it and then just do it. And then this will be the best year ever. It's more about, it's not about a lack of knowledge of how to change. It's a behavior thing, isn't it? It's all behavior. We know how to lose weight. We just don't want to do the behaviors it takes to do it. We know how to get our finances in order, but we just don't want to do the habits and the behaviors that it takes to do it. I like spending money. Well, you're going to have to stop that to get out of debt. Well, I don't want to. Okay, then you're not going to change. You know how. I just told you how, but you don't want to. See what I'm saying? So we make it complicated. Stop making things so complicated. If you want to change this year, just do it. Just change. Just do it. I, should, I wonder if Nike's ever thought about using that as a slogan. I should have run that back. So the year, at the beginning of the year, every year, we, we like to say it's going to be the best year ever by engaging in a fast. And so we've done this for over a decade, doing a 12-day corporate fast together. And like I already mentioned, the fast leads into our advance, and it's just something we've been doing annually, and it's been so beneficial just to start the year off intentional with our relationship with God and as a church corporately together. And this year's going to be no different, so it starts tomorrow, like I mentioned, Start thinking about how you're going to fast over the next 12 days, and then it ends on the 25th, which leads into our advance on the 26th and 27th. And I want to encourage you to participate in some capacity, especially if you've never fasted before. If you've never tried fasting, I really want to encourage you to give it a shot in some capacity over this next 12 days. To give it a try. And so this morning, I'm going to talk to us about what fasting is and equip us and how we can participate over the next 12 days uh, before we do it, let's pray. <clears throat> God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this time in your presence. And we thank you for um, just the opportunity to engage you at a new level um, this year. And God, as we prepare to fast starting tomorrow, God, would you inspire us? Would you um, burn in us the desire to want to do this? 
and God, that it would be a transformational time over these next 12 days. As we just intentionally focus our hearts and our attention on you, we put some things aside that maybe can getting in the way or just taking too much of our time and choose to put our focus on you. God, would you honor that? Would you bless that as each of us decide to do that over the next 12 days? In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, before we can talk about what fasting is, I think it helps to talk about what fasting isn't. Okay, so the first thing fasting isn't, it's not a hunger strike. It's not a hunger strike where it's like, well, God, I need this, and I'm not going to eat until I get that answer, so it's on you. And we just sit there, me so hungry, right? It's not, it's not a hunger strike to get what we want. Okay, it's also, fasting is also not a starvation weight loss program. <clears throat> You will likely will lose weight if you don't eat for the next 12 days, but it's not a starvation weight loss program where it's like, oh, I just don't, I'm a fasting so I can lose weight. No. It's also not a religious duty to impress God. Like, not eating doesn't impress God. Think of, it's not about the not eating. We'll get to that in a minute, but it's not something that we just do so that God, it's like, oh, wow, I'm so impressed. It's not eating for days. Wow. Really want to pour a blessing on that person for not eating. It's not what it's about, okay? It's not a religious duty to impress God. It's also not a spirituality billboard for your life to broadcast how holy you are to other people. Or it's like, oh, I notice you're, not eat- you're at work. And someone's like, oh, no, are you not eating lunch today? No, I'm not, and here's why. <laughs> I'm pursuing my relationship with God, and so I've chosen to not eat for the next 12 days. Like, what, what is it? Like, do you feel better now that you said that? You know what I mean? So it's, but sometimes, that, that Jesus talks about that. We'll talk about it a little bit more too. The hypocrites, they would broadcast, and it's like, oh, I'm so downtrodden as I'm fasting. Oh, it's so, the struggle is real to be so spiritual. Right, it's not a billboard for how holy you are. It's not about that, okay? So, what fasting is? Fasting is deeply personal between you and God, very personal. Now, we do it, obviously, corporately together as a church, um, but your fast is between you and God. Very personal. Fasting also, it's a physical restriction in your life that leads to spiritual growth, if done properly. We physically restrict the amount of food that we eat or things that we participate in, and we focus on God during that time, so we restrict the physical, and then we grow in the spiritual. It's a spiritual discipline, It takes discipline to fast. It's not easy. And now, you can call it a religious duty, or you can call it a spiritual discipline. To me, it's a discipline. Religious duty feels like, you gotta do this to please God. Where a spiritual discipline to me is, I've chosen to engage this because I wanna grow my relationship. And it comes from a totally different headspace and heart space when you think of it that way. Fasting is also an exercise in dependency. Because you've chosen now to take something out of your life and depend on God for that. AKA energy from food, sustenance. You've taken that away and now you've become dependent on God for your strength. So it's an exercise in dependency. The definition of fasting is the willing abstinence or reduction from some or all food, drink, or both for a period of time. That's what fasting is. Now fasting from our perspective, is all of those things with the intention of spending that time with God to grow spiritually. Fasting is also an opportunity to, to grow in the area of self, self-control. Can you actually control yourself and change your behavior like I was just talking about? I want to lose weight, but I want to eat cookies. I'm going to eat cookies. Okay, so that's poor self-control, right? Oh, I want to fast, but I'm hungry, so I'm going to eat food. Okay, well, that's where self-control needs to kick in, and you, you deny yourself of those things. That's the key to fasting, is denying the flesh and focusing on the spiritual. Is this making sense so far? Now, in case you're wondering, I just, like, I, biblically I can prove this. The result of your fast will be hunger. <laughs> and here's how I can prove it, because this is what it says in Matthew 4, 2. For 40 days, oh, this is Jesus. Jesus was fasting. For 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. So I can, you will be hungry. That's a result of fasting because you're not eating food. So you're going to be hungry. Even Jesus got hungry. And Jesus was Jesus. 
so he got hungry. So you're going to get hungry. Um, you just have to accept that. If you're going to fast food, you're going to feel hunger. And so that's where the self-control kicks in. Can I, can I push through those pains? Can I and just see what God has for me? Can I really, can I do it? Oh, but the food's just there. Just, just a little snack. How, how far can you push yourself um, and your self-control? Okay, so a couple elements of fasting that I want to highlight from things I've noticed in Scripture. There's three things I'm going to talk about. And the first one when it I comes to fasting is um, repentance. And I want to look at the story of Jonah. You guys know the story of Jonah where God tells him to go to Nineveh and he doesn't want to. And then he gets eaten by a whale or a fish, right? You guys know the story? And then he, you guys know what I'm talking about? Jonah? Okay. So then he goes to Nineveh and says, you've got to repent or God's going to destroy Nineveh. And this is what happens. So this is in Jonah chapter 3, 4 to 10. So I'll read it. If you want to follow along, you can, but I, I don't have it on the screen, but you have it in your Bible's phone things. This is Jonah 3, 4 to 10. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. What a great message to bring, hey? The people of Nineveh believed God's message. From the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne, took off his royal robes, he dressed himself in burlap, and sat on a heap of ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herds and flocks, may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear garments of mourning, and everyone must pray earnestly to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence who can tell? Perhaps even yet, God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. When God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. It's interesting. And then it's, it's funny because then later Jonah's disappointed. <laughs> he's like, oh, I wanted to see you destroy them. Like he's actually disappointed that they repented. He came to tell them to repent. They do. And then he's like, oh, but I kind of wanted to see how you were going to destroy them. And he's kind of bummed out. So the fast here in Jonah, this is a fast of repentance. There was a call to repentance. And the way that they reminded themselves, I think, of that time of repentance was, hey, we're going to fast. No one eats. Not even the animals eat as a reminder that we're in a season of repentance right now. Because God has sent a message. And who knows, maybe this will appease his anger. And sure enough, they fast, they repent, they change their ways, and then God doesn't destroy Nineveh. Now, one thing I want to highlight I think is really important is that God's decision to not destroy Nineveh wasn't because they stopped eating. It wasn't because they fasted. Because let's have another look at verse 10. It says this, When God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind. He didn't look down and say, oh, because they have stopped eating, I now have mercy on them. No, it was the repentance that changed his mind. The fast was just a reminder of the repentance that they were engaging in. Is this making sense? So fasting, in this case, was a reminder of the repentance, and it was the change of heart, it was the change of behavior that got God's attention. Oh, they're serious about this. Because they're not just not eating and still doing what they're doing. They're not eating, but they have, their hearts have changed. And that's what God looks for, is a change of heart. So perhaps there are areas in your life, maybe, um, where there's a need for repentance. Maybe there's some habits, maybe there's some things, some cycles in your life that maybe over these next 12 days, you can allow the fast to be a reminder of your repentant heart in those areas. And you can use this as a fa the fast to be a fast of repentance in your life. See, a repentant heart and life will always draw you closer to God. Always. And the reason is because we're turning from one thing towards God. That's what repentance is. It's doing, they're going towards this way. Nineveh was doing this. They repented, they did a 180, and they focused on God. That's what repentance is. So a repentant heart will always draw you closer to God because you're turning from something towards Him. And it's going to draw you closer to God. So isn't that interesting because isn't that just what fasting is? Fasting is essentially repentance. It's turning from one thing with the intention to focus on God. 
That's interesting, isn't it? Fasting is basically repentance. It's an act of repentance, saying, normally I look to food for sustenance. I've chosen to put that aside and focus on you for sustenance. So fasting and repentance, very similar, very synonymous. The second thing I want to point out um, that can happen in fasting, and it's an important part of fasting, is that we have humility. In Ezra 21, 8.21, it says, And there by Ahava Canal, I gave orders for all of us to fast and humble ourselves before God. There are so many references to fasting and humility in the Bible. You can find them if you want to look them up. But there's something so humbling about choosing to fast and humbling our hearts. And fasting is a great way to posture ourselves in the place of humility. Because as with anything, when it comes to the things of God, it's not the act of fasting, but the heart posture in the fasting that God looks for. It's not how much you give. It's your heart when you give. It's not that you fasted for 450 days in a row. It's what was your heart posture in the midst of your fast. That's what concerns God, is your heart but we get caught up in the physical, we get caught up in the, the duty of it, and we make that the thing. But that doesn't interest God. What interests God is how is your heart being managed in that thing, in the fasting, in the giving. James 4, 6 says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Because sometimes we can even get proud of ourselves for fasting. It's like, oh, I'm doing so good. <laughs> haven't eaten in like four hours. You're nailing it. Right? We can start to get proud. But God resists the proud. He's looking for those who are humble. Do you have a humble heart in your fast? Are you, have you humbled yourself before God? And like I mentioned earlier, fasting is this exercise in dependency. I've chosen to limit this to be dependent on you. I've humbled myself. In humility, I'm coming to you for dependent, and I'm showing you that I'm dependent on you in this area of my life. Is his food our source of strength, or is it God? Jesus said during his fast that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. In his fast, his dependency was on the word of God. Is it food or TV uh, your source of comfort, or is it God? Fasting can be a great recalibration of these things in our lives. These things that we find ourselves going to for comfort or for strength or for whatever, we take those out and we put, replace God with those things and we've recalibrated our hearts. <clears throat> the things that we find ourselves looking to other than God become very evident when we remove them from our lives for a season. Oh, I didn't realize how much time I spent on TV until I took TV out of my life for 12 days. What do I do with all this time? <laughs> We don't, we, don't, we don't realize it until we take it away. It's like, I just don't have time to spend time with God. Well, you take TV out for 12 days, you have more than enough time. You probably ran out of things to pray for. <laughs> you had so much time. But sometimes we don't know because we haven't, this is a recalibration time. It kind of shakes us out of our rut. It shakes us out of our routine <clears throat> and with the attention to focus on God and all of a sudden we've got this depth in our relationship with God because we chose to eliminate something and come humbly to him. God is drawn to a humble heart. And that's why fasting and prayer can be so powerful in our lives because as we choose to humble ourselves and recognize our need for God, he loves to respond to that. He loves to respond to a humble heart. Psalm 10, 17 says, Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will strengthen their hearts. You will listen carefully. So if you want to be strengthened in heart, you want to be heard by God? Humble yourselves. If you feel like you've got things together in your life and you're in no need of God, fasting will probably be of no value to you because humility is a huge part of fasting. But if you recognize the need and the desire for more of God in your life and are willing to humble yourself and acknowledge your dependency on him, fasting is going to be a great value to you even if you don't get the things that you're asking for in your fast, it's still going to be a great value to you because it's going to draw you closer to God. Not eating isn't the win when it comes to fasting. 
not eating and having a heart of a humble heart and dependency on God is the win. And as you posture yourself that way for the next 12 days, I think it's going to be incredibly rewarding for you. All right, the third thing I want to talk about uh, that can result from fasting is intimacy. Intimacy with God. Fasting is an opportunity to increase your intimacy with God. And you may be saying to yourself, well, why do I need to starve myself to grow (laughs) in my intimacy with God? You don't. But that being said, I've found when you're intentional, when I've been intentional with relationships in my life, they tend to get better. And fasting is just an opportunity to be intentional with your relationship with God. See, fasting can be something that we do when we are in desperate need for an answer from God. We just like, okay, I really need this answer to prayer, so I'm going to fast and pray like crazy, and so I'm going to do this. However, what happens is if that's the only time we're really pressing into God is when we need something, we're essentially treating God like Santa Claus. It's like, I really need something, so I'm not going to eat, and hopefully well, that will get God's attention, and he can say, well, you didn't eat, so now you're on the good list, so now I can give you that gift. No. But if that's the only way that fasting enters in our life, that's what it, that's what it becomes about. It becomes about this like uh, goods and services transaction where I did this, now you can give me this. What if, what if your fast this season, this next 12 days, was no agenda other than to grow your intimacy with him? How would that actually even change the way you pray during the fast? Not, oh God, I need this, I need this, I need this answer to prayer, I need you to show up here, but it was just, oh God, I want to get to know you better. The prayer changes. Your heart changes. But so often it's all about, I need, I need, I need, I need more of this, I need this, but now I'm fasting so you'll really hear me now because I'm praying and fasting and you're, you're surely going to hear me and answer it now. What if it was just about time spent with? Heart changes. God loves to spend time with us. And our lack of intimacy with him is never his doing. He's always there. Longing to have an intimate relationship with us. It's all the other things that get in our way that often rob us from intimacy with him. James 4, 7 to 8 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. There's your key to intimacy. Draw near to him and he'll draw near to you. Let this fast be a reminder of the joy of your salvation. Where it's just like, man, thanks for my salvation. I just want to honor you and spend time with you over the next 12 days and get to know you better. When I was preparing this week, I just said, God, why do you, why do you want us to fast? And it was like immediately, immediately the response was, I want to spend time with my kids. Like that was what I felt almost immediately in my spirit. It's, Yeah, we can bring, of course we're going to have prayer requests, of course we're going to bring things to him, but if that's the only driver for our prayer time, we're missing a big portion of what this fast could be for you. I mean, try it in any relationship, or sorry, got ahead of myself here. Repent, humble yourself, and pursue intimacy, and you're going to have a fantastic fast. Because I think even maybe as you do that, without even having an agenda, you're probably going to find the answers maybe that you were looking for, and they might not be the answers that you thought you were looking for. You also may discover things that you weren't even looking for. It's because the pursuit of intimacy will often result in discovery. Try it with any relationship in your life. As you pursue closeness in a relationship, you're going to naturally discover new things about that person. Right? Like I know some of you okay. But if I spend more time with you this week, I'm going to learn new things about you. As I choose to be intentional with my relationship with some of you this week, I'm going to, I would naturally discover new things about you just because of time spent with. And so you're going to discover things about God over the next 12 days as you pursue intimacy with him. And you maybe get answers to things. This is what, I'm going to try and explain this. There may be things you're thinking that God was going to do for you in a certain way, but as you get to know him better over the next 12 days, you're going to learn his heart and realize that you are off. Does that make sense? 
I'm kind of flying off the cuff here, but that's what I feel like is gonna happen. You're thinking you needed something, you're thinking God was gonna do something a certain way, but as you pursue to get to know him better, you're gonna learn his heart better, and he's gonna go, no, that's not, and you're gonna go, oh, I missed, I was, I was off. I was asking for the wrong thing. Because you're gonna discover something new about him, and he's gonna go, so you thought you needed that, but now you know me better? Now you see how I want this for you. Forgive me, right? So you can discover those new things in intimacy. Because what happens with the lack of intimacy is it, it leads to assumptions. If you don't know somebody, you assume certain things about them. And that can hurt the relationship. And I think the same thing happens in our relationship with God. We don't know him maybe as good as we think we do, so we assume things and then we misrepresent him. Or we, misunder, we think we, have, we misunderstand him because we don't actually know him. So that time spent will re- hopefully remove some of those assumptions. Because you can look at Josh and you could see him up here doing his thing. And you could assume certain things about him. Whatever those things are. But as you get to know him, you realize, oh, those things are all true. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm kidding. But you get what I'm saying, right? You see people, you see how they, whatever they do, and then you just assume stuff. Let's stop assuming things about God and actually get before him and get to know him and actually hear his heart. And I wonder how many times we've assumed things about God which has actually robbed us of intimacy with him. So, let's get into the nuts and bolts. How do we do this? How do we fast? Well, before we even get into any of that, I, I, need, to, I need to preface it with this verse. No one needs to know that you're fasting. So this is uh, from Matthew 6, 16 to 18. Obviously, we're going to know we're fasting because we're doing this together. But this is what it says in Matthew 6, 16 to 18. This is Jesus speaking. And when you fast, so the when there implies that we're going to. We're supposed to. Okay? So we'll just, why, do I, why should I? Well, Jesus says when you. So we'll, is that good enough? Okay. So when you fast, don't make it obvious It's not a spirituality billboard like I was talking about. Don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. If that's why you're doing it, you've already missed the mark, okay? I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. So if if that's your reward you're looking for, you can get that. I'm fasting. Please acknowledge me how holy I am. There, you got your reward, okay? Jesus says, but when you fast comb your hair, wash your face, then no one will notice that you're fasting except your father who knows what you do in private and your father who sees everything will reward you. Don't compromise an earthly reward for the reward that father wants to give you. No one needs to know. It's deeply personal like I mentioned. Okay? You go to work, you're starving, no one knows you're starving. No one needs to know. Push through. Depend on God. Keep it extremely private between you and God because that's what the reward is. If you're fasting for other people, you've missed, there's no point fasting. That's, that's not the point. You're fasting to remind your heart of why you're fasting. Right? Oh yeah, why am I starving today? Oh yeah, because I'm pursuing intimacy with God. God, what are you saying right now? Thanks, needed that. Back to work. That's what I love about fasting. I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but I mean, it's good to, like, we sacrifice social media, TV, different things like that. That's the reason why I think fasting food is so powerful is because it reminds us in places where we wouldn't normally be reminded of God. Why am I starving at work today? Oh, yeah, I didn't have lunch. Why didn't I have lunch? Because I'm fasting. And all of a sudden, you're aware of God in a situation where normally you wouldn't have been aware of him, maybe. That's why, that's why fasting food is so powerful, because it's a physical reminder of a spiritual reality that you're trying to engage. So how do we do this? Well, we got to know why you're fasting. What are you fasting for? Maybe there's some things you're asking God for. Maybe it's intimacy. Maybe it's repentance. Maybe you just need to work on humility. Whatever it is, you decide. What's your motivation for fasting? Oh, by the way, this thing that I'm holding right now is available on your app. There is a fasting part on the app, and you can click on that, and it says how to fast. You click on that, and you'll see this handout in there. If you want to follow along, you can or if you need to reference it later or over the next 12 days, it's on the app. There's a fasting section in there. And there are some handouts that'll be available at the back as well if you need one, okay? So what are you fasting for? 
Be clear in your focus. Prepare your spirit. Get ready to fast. And then you've got to determine how you're going to do it. What method are you going to choose? I think it's so important to make a plan before you start. Because if you don't make a plan before you start, it's so easy just to switch your plan when it gets hard. It's like, I'm going to do a 12-day fast, no food, and then three days in, you're like, I'm hungry. Okay, change your mind. I'm just, just, just kidding. I was just doing a three-day fast, and now I'm going to do a separate three-day fast or something else, right? Make a plan and stick to it. There's something, obviously spiritually there's going to be a reward, but I think there's something for you personally that there's a reward about pushing through something when it gets hard. And then how the, that will grow your capacity, like I said, in self-control as well. So make a plan, stick to it. So we have some corporate requests that are on here. So if you're in your fast and you want to pray for things for the church because we are doing this together, they're listed on the app. I'll just highlight them quickly. We're asking for transformational, transformational intimacy, for souls being saved, for personal and corporate encounters in the glory of God, and clarity and resource for new vision. Those are the things that we're asking for together as a church. Now, here's some different types of fast. The first one is an absolute fast. No food, no liquid for a certain period of time. That one's pretty intense. So be careful with that one. If you're going to go no food and no drink for a certain amount of time, that, that one's really intense. Okay, then there's a normal fast, which is no foods, but you have liquids for a certain period of time. So you can have wa- water, of course. Lots and lots of water, broths, juice, things like that if you need those things. That's a normal fast. Then there's a partial fast, which is certain foods and liquids. Think of like the Daniel fast. So Daniel only ate fruits and vegetables and, and grains and things like that for a certain period of time. So you can just reduce certain things. So maybe you're going to take out sugar or chocolate or meat or whatever it is. You decide certain types of food you could remove from your diet for a while. And then there's sacrificial fasts. So maybe things like media, social media, um, I don't know, whatever. Anything that consumes your time that you love doing that you can maybe set aside for 12 days, a sacrificial fast. So I'm not going to go on Facebook or Instagram or whatever the other ones are that the kids are on these days. No video games, no Pinterest, no shopping. I don't, whatever, you decide. Whatever those things are, like seriously, you've got to just decide. What are the things... And sometimes what happens, the things that come to your mind quickest are probably the ones that you should do. Like whatever just came to mind as I was trying to throw out those things, you're like, oh, I should do that one. You're like, "Mm, but what else could I do? Uh, I'll do that one because it'll be easier, right? You know, you know. Your heart knows exactly what you should give up because it's not easy. And if if it's coming to your mind that fast, God's going to be saying, I want that one. Just take that out for 12 days. And the time you had spent shopping, spend in the word. And if you, need the, if you need to go to the mall to get your fix, go and just be in the mall, but do your prayer time in the mall. I don't know, whatever you got to do. But. So some sort of sacrificial fast you can do. Now, I, I think those ones are great, media ones and all that. It's so massively important because we just, they suck the life out of us that we spend so much time scrolling on our stupid phones for absolutely no value to us personally. Um, so if you're going to do that, I think it's important that you do some kind of food with it, even if it's like a certain meal. Maybe you don't only eat you only eat supper or you only eat lunch or whatever it is. Because like I said, that physical response I think is so important because at work you might not have time to go on Facebook so you don't think about God. Where that physical response will remind you of God in different places than you normally would be reminded like I was saying before. So I think it's good to pair it with some kind of food but whatever you decide is totally up to you. So there's different ways you could do it. You could do the full 12 days, the same fast, boom, 12 days. I'm doing this kind of fast for the whole amount. Go for it. Uh, You could break it up into three-day fasts, if that makes it easier for you. Or you could do different things for three days, however you want. Uh, Like I mentioned, you could do a daylight fast, where you don't eat all day, but then you have supper maybe with your family, and then that's what you do. Daniel fast, where you're eating certain foods, or a combined fast of some kind. Does that make sense? Is that clear on different ways you could fast? And then if you're doing food, it's so important, it says on there, water, water, water. Drink lots of water very important. And if physically your body can't do it, you need to talk to your doctor first, make sure you do that. Don't push yourself like you hurt yourself. That's not the goal of this fast. And I also need to say this too, I think, like if you're just having a hard time and it's like you're pushing through, you're doing your best, but you need to stop and just have a cracker because you're just dying, it's okay. It's about the heart. Obviously, like I was saying, you want to push yourself as far as you can. You want to, you want to push through those things, but if you just, you're just struggling and you need a little fix, that's okay, 
It's about your heart. God's not going to not answer your prayer or not spend time with you because you had to have a cracker, right? We just make it so religious. We make it so official. And we want to because that gives us some guidelines, but the guidelines just are to help remind us of our heart condition in it. Is that fair? So be at peace in that. Don't stress about that, like feel like you failed. You didn't fail. You're trying. You're pursuing God. There's no failure in pursuit of intimacy with God. You cannot fail there. You can't. The fasting is just an encouragement to do it. And you're like, yeah, but this is different because the church is asking us to fast. Okay, would you have fasted on your own if we didn't ask you to fast? So, so this is like, this isn't, this, I didn't want to do this. It's being forced on me. Well, we're just encouraging you to be a part of it. No one's forcing you to do this. It needs to be a decision that you make on your own. But there's just something so, and like Nineveh, they called everybody to fast. It wasn't a choice. We're giving you the choice, but we're encouraging you to participate because corporately we're going to benefit. If each of us individually are growing in a relationship with God, we're going to benefit corporately. And if we're benefiting corporately, then we're, our community is going to benefit. If in this fast, you privately, God releases some vision and some dreams in your life that you go and pursue that's going to change our community, that's a huge win in my books. So, we're doing it together, but we're doing it individually, and we're hopefully going to benefit individually, and we're hopefully going to benefit corporately, which is going to affect our community. Amen? So, I don't care if you're fasting or not fasting. I'm not going to ask you to stand because it's not about that. I want to pray for you and just ask God for strength for you over the next 12 days that it would be a ridiculous spiritual growth time for you. So let's pray. God, I thank you that you love to hang out with us and you want to have an intimate relationship with us. And so God, I'm asking over these next 12 days we would learn things about you that we never even thought possible. And God, as we choose to fast, as we choose to give these things up over the next 12 days, God, would you give us strength? Would you give us um, exactly what we need? We would turn to you to be the source of comfort, of strength, or whatever it is. And God, would you show up? God, we choose to repent. We choose to be humble. And we choose to grow our intimacy with you. That we are eager to spend these next 12 days with you in a, in a, in a new way, in a new, unique way. And God, we thank you that you love to draw near to us as we draw near to you. And God, these corporate things and these personal requests that we have that we're going to be bringing to you over these next 12 days, God, we're asking for really cool testimonies to come out of these next 12 days. Ridiculous answers to prayer. Ridiculous dreams and visions that people would have that would inspire a different way of living that affects us, and it affects our community. Bless these next 12 days, I pray. And God, that 2020 would be our best year ever. Mm-hmm.